Well, man, uh, this is actually where it all started. Um, I was 14 years old, um, right here in this community, man, and started selling drugs, actually right here on this corner. Um, I was a freshman at Mill High School and made the football team. Uh, coming in as a freshman quarterback. I was in the sports real tough, but at that time in my life, man, I had a lot of voids. I was dealing with low self-esteem and um, a lot of insecurities I didn't really have the closest relationship with my parents at the time and <clears throat> um, it hasn't always been cool to have dark skin and um, <laughs> basically was dealing with a lot of adolescent insecurities that a lot of adolescents deal with with parents, friends, um, growing pains, things of that nature but I was looking for something to fill the voids um, in my life and Growing up in this community, we don't have a lot of uh, black men in suits and ties, but unfortunately the ones that we aspire to be like are the drug dealers, the gang members, and things of that nature because that's what we're around. So when I was 14 and started dealing with these obstacles and challenges, um, I basically, man, ran to the streets because it seemed like money could fix all my problems. And I felt like if I got the things, um, you know, the cars, the jewelry, <laughs> the money to get those things and that would take away all my problems, my low self-esteem. Um, I wouldn't have to worry about my parents. I wouldn't have to worry about any things that was bothering me if I got money. So here I am right here, 14 years old with a sack of uh, crack cocaine. And um, this when my life would change forever. So to make a long story short, man, I got kicked out of Mill High School. Once I started selling drugs, that was my only focus. And, um, you know, I basically just <sighs> became addicted to the dope game. You know, it's not just addicts who become addicted, but drug dealers become addicted too for the simple fact that you get addicted to the lifestyle, the money, the cars, the women, everything that comes with it. And when you get in the streets so young, um, you never really have a chance to realize, number one, what life is really about. Number two, you're not able to discover the gifts that you really have and how they're supposed to be used. Um, September 22nd, 1996, man, I, that day, man, I just woke up with a dark cloud over my head. Um, I was enjoying a lot of material success in the dope game, as I said before, but I was so empty inside, man, and really didn't know which way to go. I was 17, I was actually 18 at the time, and um, I had been in the streets since I was 14, so I really didn't know too much else. And so I basically kept doing what I was doing, but on September 22nd, you know, um, it was just a feeling that, I don't know, everything was wrong. But, um, you know, an acquaintance of mine owed me some money, and um, basically, man, we had a fight, I won the fight, and 15 minutes later, he came back with the gun, and this is where we were. Uh, right here on 34th and Broadway. And I was so depleted at that time, I really didn't care whether I lived or died. You know, America teaches us that it's all about what you can get, the biggest house, the nicest car, the most beautiful woman, etc. And I had all these things, but I was still empty, and I felt like I didn't have a reason to live anymore. And I was only 18 years old, and right before he shot me, I said, pull the trigger, I'm ready to die. And I really didn't care whether I lived or died at that point. And um, he shot me, man, and, and as soon as the bullet hit me, my body turned ice cold, and I could feel myself dying. And um, not only could I feel myself dying, but I got a glimpse of where my soul was going. And um, at that instant, I realized I wasn't ready to die. And I began to call on God the only way I knew how and um, God saved my life. So on September 22nd is basically when um, things began to change for me spiritually. And um, I lost a gallon and a half of blood. My heart stopped three times. I was on life support for six hours. And the doctors actually told my family that I wasn't gonna make it. Um, I was baptized maybe when I was eight years old, but really didn't have a relationship with God 
But when I opened my eyes from surgery, I knew that God had saved my life for the simple fact that right before I got shot, I admitted that I was ready to die, yet and still I was still alive. And the experience that I had when I was unconscious let me know that God saved my life and that he had a purpose for me. At that point, man, after rehabilitating, I got my GED. I enrolled in Jefferson Community College. And um, I graduated from JCC with 3.5 after being kicked out of five high schools. So um, I was feeling pretty good about the direction in which my life was going, but I was looking at my peers around me and they were still dying, they were still selling drugs, they were still going to prison. And I was beginning to move, beginning to move in a different direction. So I had my associate's degree and it was time for me to transfer to another school and get my bachelor's. And Morehouse College had always been a dream of mine since I began to change and educate myself. And um, once I discovered Morehouse, I mean, it just seemed like it was a place for me to be for the simple fact that they were known for shaping black leaders. I went down to Morehouse, man, and I got my degree in psychology. I minored in African American studies. And it's been my pursuit ever since, man, just to basically help my brothers realize what we're doing to ourselves, what we're doing to our communities, and um, what we're doing to our families. But it's the environment that we grow up in that shapes our mentality. And um, unfortunately, man, we're not learning the right things about ourselves. We're not learning the truth about ourselves as African-American men, but we're learning a lot of falsehoods about manhood. And as a result of that, we continue to die. Uh, right now, we're on the other end of uh, 32nd Street, where it's basically I did a lot of other my dirt. Uh, she was standing in front of um, another spot where one of my friends was killed. Um, the majority of my friends in this community are dead or in prison or on their way. This is Aubrey Williams and my mission is to enlighten um, the African American community in particular on the things that we need to do, both young people as well as our elders. Um, it's time for our young people to realize what we're doing to ourselves and what we're doing to our communities. We need to understand the power and the um, places that we can go through education. If we educate ourselves, we can understand why we're going to school and not necessarily sit in the back of the classroom passing time away, but we can actually be instilling something in ourselves to prepare us for life. Um, too many are taking the easy route of selling drugs and getting into things that are gonna be detrimental to our life and to our health down the line and we don't really realize those things until it's too late. So I want to paint a picture for young people letting them know what's gonna happen if they make wrong choices. I understand the struggle that's going on within our young people. I understand that a lot of them don't feel like they really have a place and it's easy to find your place in the streets. Our young people are dying at alarming rates and all they need is some love and some support and some direction. And if we begin to change the things that we do, then maybe we can begin to change them.